Hello everyone, welcome back to the Linode Linux Server Security Series. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at logging and system monitoring on Linux. Now, it's, it's very important to understand the context in which we'll be looking at this because uh, when we talk about things like logging on Linux, uh, this uh, th th this can be quite a complicated and advanced topic, uh, given uh, the various uh, the various forms of logs that are going to be collected on a Linux system. So we are primarily going to be interested uh, with the security logs or logs related to security events on the system. Uh, um, we are then going to be taking a look at monitoring your system, so uh, analyzing the various processes that are currently running on the system. I uh, will take a look at how to monitor user activity on a system and how to view what each user is doing, so on and so forth. So uh, to begin with, uh, we have already taken a look at, uh, on a very basic level, uh, how uh, logs are used on Linux in regards to security events. For example, on the YouTube series um, and uh, on the Linode series, we covered how to use fail to ban for brute force protection. And I actually mentioned explicitly uh, that fail to ban utilizes the auth log under the uh, log directory uh, right over here. So again, if I list out the default log directory and that is var log, and um, I'm just going to list that out. You can see we have plenty of logs here. And as I said, Linux generates a lot of logs. Um, you know, various services generate their own logs, so on and so forth. So, you know, you have a kernel log, you have your mail log, syslog, uh, if you have that installed. Uh, now, we're not going to be covering syslog and uh, again, you know, the various log analyzers that you can use because uh, that is something that will require its own video. However, when it comes down to security, we can cover the most important. Uh, so number one is the auth log. Now the auth log contains information uh, about you know various security related events. Uh, number one, it 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 involves authentication attempts, failed authentication attempts, and it logs important information like the service uh the, the service in 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 question so for example if there's a failed authentication attempt via ssh it lists that out and it actually it actually lists out the time and the ip address that made that failed authentication attempt and that's why tools like fail to ban uh, can actually come in place and and monitor this and say okay uh, within the space of uh, two minutes we received uh, more than five failed authentication attempts uh if that's the case take the ip address and add it to uh, or create a firewall rule to block that IP for a certain amount of time. So it really is very simple to understand it that way. So if we display the contents of auth.log here, so I'll just do that right now. So cat um, and I'll say var log and we'll then say auth.log and we hit enter. You can see we have a ton of information here that might seem a little bit uh, confusing, but I'll try and explain it as best as possible. Um, so when you take a look at a log file, uh, you should you should have an idea of what you're looking for. Now when we talk about the auth.log file, as I said, it's related to authentication attempts. In this case, you can see uh, it lists out the time and date, uh, the, the actual host, in this case, local host, uh, it then lists out the, the daemon that you're connecting to. In this case, we have login D, right? So systemd login D. And then we have sshd, which is uh, the SSH uh, daemon. And then you can go down here, we have a cron. Um, we also have sudo, uh, where uh, there was an authentic authentication attempt made. And you can see it gives you the command that, uh, that was actually used here. Um, so... Again, you can go through all of these logs and, and monitor and uh, you can look for exactly what you're looking for. You can search for exactly what you're looking for uh, using various utilities on Linux. Uh, one of these utilities is grep, as I've already mentioned. So if we're looking for SSH authentication attempts, for example, we can say cat the auth.log file and then use grep, right? And we can say with grep, I want you to look for a pattern and I want you to match this particular pattern. So we can say SSHD, for example, in it enter. And that is only going to show up the SSH authentication attempts or any logs associated with SSH. In this case, you can see it matches them out. And now we have a much clearer picture or a, a much clearer uh, set of data that we can deal with. So for example, we can see that on October uh, 1st, uh, at the given time, uh, you can see the server, is, uh, the server starts listening on port 22. And then there was a disconnect here. And we then had a PAM authentication attempt. And that looks like there was a failure, right? And then there was a failed password entered right over here. You can see in it that that's my IP. The reason I did that was to actually show you this. So before I logged in successfully, 
I uh, logged in with an incorrect password so that there would be failed authentication attempts. So uh, that was, th these were these two sessions right over here and then the connection is closed. Uh, and then you can see I log in with the correct password and it tells me accepted password and it then gives me a session. And then there was a disconnect from another IP it looks like. And uh, there was another disconnect right over here. So it looks like we had another IP trying to connect. Uh, but that being said, that's, um, that's how you can look for, uh, for particular pieces of data. You can use the grep utility. And of course, it doesn't have to be just SSH authentication attempts. It could be any other service that, uh, that utilizes authentication. Um, so that's the, uh, that is the auth.log file. As I said, you can look for failed authentication attempts. So again, I can search for uh, authentication failure. So I can say authentication failure within this file and sorry that is an incorrect spelling there so fail authentication failure and it lists out the various authentication failures right over here and it gives me the information regarding that so this as i said is typically our services like fail to ban uh, work they work by looking for particular expressions within the um within the particular log file and if it finds that uh that particular expression it'll then look for the ip address or the value of our host uh, and then it'll add that to the firewall rule uh, to, to, to actually block that IP for a certain period of time. So uh, again, these tools all utilize the log files. Um, so that is how to list uh, authentication attempts. Now let's take a look at how to list uh, all login and log out attempts. And uh, again, the log file that is responsible for that, if, uh, if I can just list out the uh, logs one more time. So var log and I'll just hit enter. The file we're looking for is a file called uh, WTMP. Now, if we try and catch the contents of um, var log and WTMP, uh, you can see that it's gonna give us a bunch of, uh, you know, random data here that is really isn't readable to the user. And that's because you have to actually use a utility called uh, last. So if we open up the man page and we use, and we search for the last uh, command the last command allows you to show a listing of uh, the last logged in users so in our case we want to specify the la the we want to dis display the host name um, we also want to display the ip address and um, let's see what else do we want to display and the full times so the login uh, and logout times so if we want to do that we say last and then we say aif right so that was capital f and we hit enter so it's going to tell us right over here that uh, we logged in root and we are still logged in and it gives us the IP. So this was the user, um, the date at which the user logged in, whether they're still logged in or logged out and uh, the IP uh, through which they logged in. So for example, if I just get out of here and I uh, log in one more time and I'll just enter my password in here. So there we go, enter in my password and uh, i then try and display and write that command again you can see it's going to tell me right over here there was a log off right uh, this was the login time and this was the log out time and it gives you a duration right over there and it also gives you the ip so very very useful um very very useful utility you can also use um we can also take a look at the btmp file uh the btmp file and the wtmp file as we've just taken a look at these are all binary files which means you need to use the last command to to actually utilize them uh so um when we use the uh when we're taking a look at the other file so if i let me just list out the logs one more so var log um and I'll hit enter. If we take a look at the, B, the BTMP file, uh, the BTMP file is similar to the WTMP file. Um, it essentially lists out all the, um, the, bad, um, the bad login attempts or the failed login attempts. So uh, again, we, to, to actually utilize this, we'll be using the last command, uh, and the last B command. So if I list out last B here and I hit enter, you can see uh, last B shows uh, in, in this case, we're using last B. So last B shows a uh, listing of last logged in users. In this case, we want to display the host last, um, the host uh, last. So this will display the host name. Um, we also want to specify the DNS. So um, we'll display DNS and then uh, we'll also display the full times. So again, we'll say last B and then um, ADF. So ADF and then we hit enter. 
and that is going to display all the last logins but what's more important is we need to actually list out the user so we specify the user root and we hit enter now and uh, you can now see it lists out uh, the last bad login attempts and in this case uh, these were the attempts that were made uh, when i had actually set up the server initially uh, and um, as as you as you recall i had actually done this intentionally uh, so that I can actually demonstrate this and show you that this does work. So again, uh, if I if I if I log out and I log in and I and I try and use a, an incorrect password and I use the last B command, uh, this will display all the failed login attempts or bad login attempts for that particular user. Uh, right. Okay. When we talk, uh, let's move on to the uh, to some more information. If you want to find out uh, a user's last login time or when they were last logged in, which again can be very important from a security perspective, we can use the last log command. So if I clear this and we search for last log, and I hit enter, you can see last log will uh, report the most recent login of all users of uh, a given user. So we can use and specify the user here. So in this case, I can say last log uh, user root uh, and you can see it tells me the last time i was logged in was thursday october 1st and it gives us the time there uh, we because i have another user here so if i say cat etsy password right i can hit enter um we can see that i also added another user called alexis uh, if i try and log in another in another tab here uh let's see if we can actually log in sorry with the user alexis um I actually added this user to the server so i'll log in with the user alexis here it should actually prompt me to enter a password is that the correct ip address for the server no it isn't sorry let me just specify that one more time that was an incorrect server ip so uh, i'll enter in the password for the user alexis and um, again if i just go back in here and display that one more time i can now use the user alexis and that will display when Alexis was last logged in. In this case, it gives us the time and the IP address from which the user logged in. Uh, right. So that is, again, how you can list in the when exactly the users logged in last. And you can specify the user you're interested in. Uh, but what if you want to find out what users are currently logged in? So we currently have about two users logged in. I'll just change this to bash. Right. And uh, if we uh, if we want to display that, we're going to be using the who command. All right, so the who command essentially displays who is logged on to the system. And um, again, if I just clear that out, and we're now moving on to the system monitoring uh, side of things. So if we say who, and I hit enter, you can see it's going to tell me Alexis is logged on and the user root is logged on. It gives us uh, the actual date and time and the uh, IP address, right? So uh, that is how to view uh, all the users that are currently logged in. Now let's talk about monitoring system processes um, and again there's tons of utilities you can use to do this if you want, if you want to monitor your resource consumption uh, your network consumption uh, any processes that might be taking too much uh, that might be consuming too many resources it's uh, vitally important as a uh, as, as someone who, who is interested in securing their server to understand what's running on their server uh, so to do this the typical utility that would come with any linux distribution is a utility called top and top is a is a very very good utility because it allows you to sift through all your system uh, processes and uh, uh, the one problem with it is that it does not display all of this information in a human readable format because you can actually see that it really doesn't make that much sense because even in terms of the free memory, you can see it tells me there's about 981 megabytes of memory available, 183 is free. So again, yeah, that might might make sense. And then of course it sorts out uh, the it sorts out all the processes here from their process ID, and you can scroll down. And uh, yeah, so it's a very good utility that way. But another great utility is HTOP, right? So make sure you have HTOP installed. So to do that, I'll just say sudo apt install HTOP and hit enter. It should come pre-packaged with most Linux distributions. So if I hit HTOP, HTOP is much more clearer in regards to uh, in regards to what's going on on the system. Uh, secondly, you can utilize advanced things like the search uh, the search filter, or you can actually you can use search options or specify the search of a search filter. You can also specify um, a tr the tree listing. Uh, so, for example, if I list out the tree listing here, uh, you can see it actually lists out the tree of processes, and you can actually see the commands that have been executed. 
right over there uh, or that are being run in the background right so i'll just get rid of that so uh, let's go back into sorted mode uh, you can also sort it by if we use f6 uh, you can see you can sort it by various various uh, options uh, that might be important to you so for example we can sort it by uh, the amount of RAM being consumed, I hit enter and that's going to sort it by the highest, uh, the, the process that is consuming the highest amount of RAM. In this case, you can see it's a utility called glances and I'll get to glances in a second. Um, I can also say I want you to sort it by the highest amount of CPU uh, uh, consumption. So I can hit enter for that or I can use priority or the user. Um, so HTOP is very advanced that way. So I can then hit enter and it's going to sort it by the highest amount of CPU being consumed. And it lists out the process ID, the user responsible, um, and then of course, all the other resources uh, that you can then take a look at there. Of course, you have the ability to kill processes or to search for them. So if I want to search for, uh, let's say I use F3 and I type in uh, glances, right? I hit enter and you can see it locates glances for uh, for me. If I want to kill it, I hit F9 and then I can send the uh, particular signal. So for example, if I want to kill it, I can send the kill signal. Uh, if I want to stop, stop it, I can uh, send the stop signal. And if you're familiar with Linux signals, that should be perfectly uh, simple for you to understand. Um, so again, it's a very, very uh, useful utility that you can use um, to monitor your system uh, processes and to understand what's going on in your system. You can search for processes via process ID. Uh, you can list it out based on uh, the tree or you can actually list out the tree. Uh, the, the, you can actually list out your processes in the form of a tree. Uh, you then have the ability to kill uh, processes, so on and so forth. Um, now let's take a look at glances. Uh, glances was the other utility that, uh, I, uh, again, is still used or utilized primarily because it displays network activity. So again, to install it, we say sudo apt install glances and we hit enter, right? And it's already installed. So if I open up glances in the man pages here, uh, you can see it, it, the basic description is that it is an eye on your system. Uh, glances is a cross-platform uh, curses-based monitoring uh, tool which aims to present a maximum of information in a minimum of space, ideally to fit in a classical 80 by 24 terminal. Um, and again, the goal of glances is to give you as much information as possible. So if I type in glances right over here and hit enter, you can see glances is much more, it gives us much more information than uh, we would typically have with uh, HTOP, for example. But again, this gives you a glance of your system. HTOP is really uh, to do with managing your processes. So in this case, you can see we have the CPU usage, memory usage, swap usage. As for the um, as for the other options, it gives us our public and uh, private IP if we have one. We then have the uptime. Uh, as for the load, we can see it's running on one core. Uh, we have, we have the swap, uh, the, sorry, the swap memory usage right over here. The total allocated is 512 megabytes, so on and so forth. And then, of course, the most important is the network traffic. So you can actually monitor incoming and outcoming traffic based on your interface. So, for example, if I start downloading packages, uh, so I'll just try and update my repositories here. So if I go into the user Lexis, uh, which I actually can do, so I'll just switch to root here. Um, and then I'll try and say sudo apt update, right? And I hit enter. And if I go into here, you can now see the uh, the traffic will increase. So you can see we have download and upload uh, and they both increase and reduce with the amount of traffic being consumed. So this can be a great way of monitoring if there's anything weird or suspicious going on uh, in regards to network traffic. And then of course it lists out all your processes uh, and it lists out the CPU consumption from the highest first and the memory consumption. In this case, um, you can you can actually go through the processes. Uh, so again, when, when it comes down to process management, uh, you can actually use HTOP to uh, again, manage them in regards to searching for them, killing them, stopping them, halting them. Uh, but glances gives you an overview of your system and lists out as much information as, as much useful information as possible all right uh that being said let's move on to the uh to to some other commands and utilities that we can use and uh, the last one that i actually wanted to show you is the ability to list out all the uh, logged in users uh, and when i say logged in users we of course used the who command however the who command doesn't give us a lot of context as to what exactly is going on on that other user session. So I'll switch back to Alexis here. 
and I'll just go into bash and let's say I want to run glances, right? So I'll just hit glances on the user Alexis and let's say Alexis is doing that. Uh, the tool I want to install is called WhoWatch. So to install WhoWatch, I'll say sudo apt install WhoWatch and I'll hit enter, right? And I already have that installed. So if I open up the man pages, so WhoWatch right over here, and I hit enter. So you can see WhoWatch tells us this is a console interactive process and users monitoring tool. So WhoWatch is a console. Again, I'll just skip that. It displays information about the users currently logged on uh, to the machine in real time. Uh, now, the key word here is information. So when it say information, it will list out the users that are currently on the system. Uh, that are currently logged onto the system, regardless of whether it is, uh, as, as it says right over here, uh, via SSH or Telnet, or actually physically accessing it through a uh, physical terminal session, as opposed to a remote connection. So you also have the ability to kill their uh, process that they're running. So it really is a very, uh, very, very cool and advanced tool that allows you to manage uh, what users are doing on the system. So again, you can take a look at the, uh, the commands right over here. Um, if I just list that out, so um, you can and you can use the enter key um, to actually view the selected users uh, process tree, and then that that will list out uh, the processes. Or the, you can use the T option to list all system processes, and then you have the ability to scroll up, uh, up and down, and then Control I will send the uh, end signal. We then have the Control K to send a kill process. So we can actually experiment with this. So to do that, we'll say Who Watch hit enter you can see it now displays the two users that are currently logged on and it does it sorts it out really well it says zero local zero telnet and two ssh and then if it's if there's another session uh now when we refer to other sessions these could be reverse shells set up by attackers uh or, you know either through netcat or uh, through any other scripting language uh, they could have gained access through the web server so this is a great utility for monitoring who has sessions on the system either locally or remotely um, so again, I can just hit enter for the user Alexis and you can see it lists out uh, the processes that are currently running. So in this case, you can see bash the commands I run were bash. Uh, so it logged me in with a default uh, born shell. I then said I want a bash shell. I switched to the user root and then I went back to the user Alexis and uh, spawned my bash shell again. And then I ran the command glances. Uh, so again, I can go to that particular process. You can see it's currently running uh, right over here. And then I can say control K. Uh, and that should have killed it. Um, so there we are. You can actually see it is actually killed and it uh, gives us a terminal session right over here, which is pretty cool. So you can uh, you can actually remotely uh, kill processes that other users are running for various reasons. Uh, if you're a system administrator, that is very, very helpful. So again, if I run another command like, um, let's say, htop, right? And of course, I'm just running very basic commands here to demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about. You can see in real time, it actually displays uh, what is being run by that user i can hit Control k and that will actually terminate that for us so um wait one second let me just open that up again htop and uh, i'll open up the user lexis here and we'll go back in there and we'll say Control k and that should close up htop for us and there we are htop is now killed and i'll just clear the terminal there so uh, again a very very useful utility for monitoring what uh, users are doing on the system how they're logged in it can reveal a lot about your system. I've actually used this tool many times to spot reverse connections uh, that were established through uh, various uh, vulnerabilities in services. So I uh, really recommend that you use WhoWatch when monitoring your systems. Uh, that's pretty much it regarding, uh, you know, security mo uh, monitoring your system and logging uh, when it comes down to security. As I said, these are uh, these are very advanced topics, especially the, the, the topic or the concept of logging, primarily because Linux generates a lot of logs. And as we know, within security, logs are very important. And you can actually use various tools or log analyzers to analyze these logs and make sense of what, of what all of these logs mean on a larger scale. And that's why you have various, uh, you know, uh, seam tools, uh, like, uh, like IBM QRADAR that actually allows you to use syslog servers and then you can then pull all of these logs into one centralized location and then process them and try and make sense of all of this um, that being said that's going to be it for this video thank you very much for watching and i'll be seeing you in the next video